Hype train level five, absolute maniacs. All right, uh, we are ready. Two minute delay. El Sione, quarterfinals. Rainer versus Harstem. And Rainer once more has to battle the aliens, and we know that he's not very fond of them right now. Let's get it on. Hmm. Round one, fight. Top right side of El Sione, we are looking at the main base of the man that's representing Basilisk. This is Rainer, the Italian Stallion. His last or second last day in the Netherlands, guys. Rainer is going back to Italy and then eventually he is going to Korea. I think almost all of you guys know that. For the few people that don't know, Rainer really, really wants to play in the next season of GSL. And before you guys say, but Roddy, isn't that very expensive and isn't the prize money small? Yes, it is, but Rainer cares more about honor and prestige. And he cares about money at this point. He just wants to do great in GSL. And he wants to prove all the hate is wrong. That keep on mentioning they lost to Bunny and Dong Regu the last time he tried. Bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of Shopify, Rebellions, Harstem. I gotta say, I for one am very excited to see Rainer in Korea once more. I like the GSL, but I like it a whole lot more when someone like Rainer participates in it. I find it very exciting. And that's absolutely... Maybe even a viewing party that day. Maybe we can open the doors to Casa di Rodi for some of the passionate Dutch nerds to visit Marvelous Zeitland and we can all watch Rainer together. I think that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> Thank you to Jack Green as well. Uh, Proto, my man with the 10 gifted subbies. What a day! What a day. All of you guys got in on Reddit, didn't you? Reddit and Bitcoin, baby. We're going to the moon! <laughs> I don't have any Bitcoin, unfortunately. I know it's doing great. Harstam has gone for double adept into Stalker, into Oracle. And we'll take it from there. Harstam Rainer is starting to turn into a bit of a classic for me. The captain is, of course, statistically a big underdog here. And when you look at their resumes and achievements, Rainer is a much more accomplished player. But Harstam is just freaking good in PvZ. And it almost seems that Rainer brings out the best in him. Which I'm sure Rainer is not very happy with. But I think all of us are pretty happy with it. This makes for a good show. Quarterfinals, the winner will most likely play Max Pax, Unless there was a very big upset and Wayne defeated Max Pax. And I'd be very surprised by that. As none of you guys have spammed that result to me. Most of the time, if nobody says anything, the favorites are winning. So, I assume that it's Max Pax who's waiting in the semifinals. Mm hmm Awesome game between Gabe and Christiana. Really fun. Damn it, I forgot the YouTube thing. Maybe we can put that one on YouTube, guys. That might be worth an upload. Next Monday. Best game of the previous weekly. The rest of the best of three maybe wasn't that exciting. Uh, but game three was excellent. Mm -hmm. Do we know if he goes to Homestory Cup? You mean Rainer? That is a good question. I don't know if he thought about it. I don't know if... That works out with the schedule. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. One of his oracles is mega low on HP. As low as an oracle could possibly be on HP. But it lives. Uh, yes, that means it's one HP. Mm -hmm. uh, home server cup is a, is a great question. I actually have not discussed it yet with Rainer. I think that all depends on... Uh, what phase the GSO is in at that point, how well Rainer is doing, how many days would he have to recover uh, from that trip? Because obviously traveling from Korea to Europe, not something you casually do. You don't want to spend two days in uh, two months in Korea to then travel to Europe and play the most important series the following day. Austin is going to let that shade finish up as he says, Rainer, if you don't wall off, I'm just going to go ahead and invite myself in, sir. Gets in there and Rainer is in a bit of trouble here. Like, eventually, Roaches will clean this up. But the longer it takes, the better it becomes for the captain. Weston is once more off to a good start when he's playing against the Italian Stallion. And the Queens are going to take a pretty good fight here against the Adepts. But I think Weston is already happy. And he's about to become a whole lot happier because 6 drones is going to turn into 11 drones. More lost mining time. The Oracles are still waiting as well for their moment to shine. Venus saves that. I don't know if this was worth it. 
Rainer really needs to start mining. The two oracles think that this is their moment, but Rainer paid very close attention to the minimap, so he's quick to respond. Overall, I like this for Austin. Now, if you look at the income graph, this is massive. In a six-minute game, so much lost mining time. 11 workers going down. Rainer has only a Roach War and a Nevo Chamber at the moment. Yeah, I'd be more than happy with this if I was the captain. <laughs> Max Pax is waiting. Max Pax does not seem to be doing very good against Rainer. It's kind of funny how Rainer struggles with a lot of Protoss players, but still does very well against Max Pax. While Max Pax does incredibly good against many other Zergs, but doesn't do that good against Rainer. And if you ask me my opinion about that, I think that's a stylistic thing. Where some of the Protoss players kind of try to defeat Raynor in a very different way than how Max Pax tries to defeat Raynor. And I think the way that Max Pax plays is something that Raynor enjoys playing against a little bit more. Non-stop action, non-stop multitasking, microing two, three different screens at once. Those are the games that Raynor likes. When Raynor has to walk into cannons and batteries and storms and double robo. He does not like that very much. Lone big gate for Basilisk for WTL. <coughs> I, I don't know what is going to happen. I don't know if Gabe has any plans yet. What I can tell you, not too much of a secret, is that uh, this week I'll have a meeting with the big bosses of Basilisk and see what our plans are for the upcoming season of WTL and some other things. But I mostly want to talk about WTL because we obviously know that Serral is not always available. Serral is not retiring. Serral is not disappearing. He will play. But he won't always be able to play. So it might be worth for us to see if someone like Gabe or someone like Showtime or even just a young up-and-coming player is interested in being a new player for us for the upcoming WTL season. I mean, of course, we can also send out me, but I believe that the goal of Basilisk is winning. And we have an incredibly good record in the regular season. Playoffs a little bit less, but... In the regular season, we have played 22 matches and won 21. If we're going to send out me instead of Yona, I'm afraid we're going to ruin that pretty record real quick. So we don't want to do that. Rainer is on 97 drones now. That seems a little outrageous. Trying to make up for that economic damage he took earlier in this game from all those adapts. He is a high tech Zork and he is going to go down the Lurker route once more. Earlier we had a little discussion about what we like to see from Zergs in macro games against Protoss. Some of you guys don't believe in the Lurker at all. I personally do believe in the Lurker and I have to admit that I very often see them lose. Even in situations where the Lurkers look good and I feel the Zork is playing well, they still end up losing. I just like Lurker styles more from the Zork point of view than I like Brute Lords or Ultras. Mm. Mm. Awesome has a tiny zealot run by but since Rainer had 97 drones at one point he has obviously morphed a couple of them into spine crawlers and that means that these zealots will not accomplish a whole lot war prism in the corner of the main I don't think it's going to do too much either it's a lot of zealots but there's also a decent amount of zerg units here uh, Queens will die. It's a little annoying for Reyna. He's going to be able to clean this up eventually. Harstam steps on creep. Drops the revelation. Don't think he can run into this. Hmm. Hmm. ship gets fired up as Reyna has a Spire that is 60% done. Lurker count currently 8. 8 is not that great. I know in hockey it is, but... Over here, 8 is not amazing against this many very high HP valuable Protoss units. The Mothership is a cool asset. I used to hate Motherships. These days I'm okay with it. Because they are no longer 8 supply. They are cheaper. And the recall has great potential. Nikita? Nikic? Or... <laughs> you mean uh, Skillis? Skillis is with Team Liquid, mate. I'm sure that anybody who's on Team Liquid is very happy to be on Team Liquid. Couple storms go down. Rainer feels that this is still an okay fight as the concave is beautiful. Austin does not really want to overstay his welcome. War Prism still trying, but I think Rainer is playing a great game. Despite the fact that I feel like he was in a bit of trouble after all the adepts and the oracles. I think that was a decent start for the captain. I feel like Rainer has played excellent in the last two minutes. Huh. 
Awesome is incredibly active, and I would love to show you guys all these tiny attacks that are happening non-stop. Uh, so we have a couple of well, fake zealots in the center, main zealots, or real zealots on the right side. It's obviously important to keep an eye on these two armies as well as the first Tempest already on the way. These are excellent force fields by the captain. And if you are cheering for Arsene, you're going to be happy with those. And now those two lurkers, it's just not scary enough. Only two lurkers remaining at the moment for uh, Rainer. He's firing up seven more and 14 Hydras, but... Awesome is just taking great fights. This weekly, by the way, how long is this freaking weekly going to go for? Because it's almost 10 p.m. And we're in the quarterfinals. I know it started 20 minutes later, but still... There's a couple of zealots getting on top of this lurker. Max Pax is with Sidestorm Gaming. I think if we find anyone, we're either going to find a young up-and-coming player, or we're going to find somebody who's a one-man team. Rainer has a crazy amount of minerals, but not too much gas in the bank. How much larva do we currently have? 26. And it's almost an impossible moment to make Broodloids, right? When the Tempests are already out, do you really want to start making Broodloids? Rainer is setting up multiple counterattacks, couple roaches, couple links. These links do have pretty good upgrades, and they've got Adreno Glands as well. Awesome running a bunch of Zealots into this top side base. Spine crawlers and Lurkers trying to keep the drone safe, but it's just not quite enough. Now it's really time for Rainer that he gets something going as well as the two armies are going to clash in the center of the map. Storms are landing, Lurkers are going to try to hold the line, but Immortals are truly living up to their name and they just don't die. 21 probes have fallen, Rainer still has some money, but not too much gas. Excellent games today guys, what a weekly! There's a few more Hydras show up and is that then enough to at least gun down this mothership? Time Warp even gets dropped. 30 Hydralisks! How often do you see 30 freaking Hydralisks on the production tab? I think a real iconic Starcraft unit. I'd even say the most iconic Starcraft unit. Together with the Marine. I mean, Hydras are very good if there are no storms. And there are no storms available at the moment. So Harstamir is going to get pushed back by nothing but Hydras. Mothership dies. Oracle dies. Maybe a couple of the Immorts fall as well. Harstam needs to move these units back. And he will. The Zealots are trying to hold down the line. Man, this is such an insane weekly. Turning into one of the better weeklies we've had in a little while, guys. I do think that Rainer is in trouble with only 68 drones. 600 gas is just not that much. Harsim is so good whenever he plays against Rainer. In the UFC, they often talk about mythical fighters. Like when a fighter bleaches his hair and he's invincible or whatever. I feel like Harsim is becoming a mythical protos whenever he plays against Rainer. He's just a completely different animal. One week you see him lose against the GG machine. The next week he plays absolute god tier gaming against Rainer. <laughs> Rainer's gonna be really sick of this at this point as a monstrous storm lands in the middle of a lot of the Hydras. Rainer feels that this is his moment with Hydras, Lings and Lurkers. I think it's a nice combo against what Harsim is currently working with. But Harsim has so much money. He can sacrifice a couple probes. He could even lose the base. If he just builds the right units he's going to be okay. Battery overcharge gets dropped. Uh, can we fight this, Harstam? Harstam says, yes, we can, mate. I've got five Immortals, and I've been watching some Showtime. Showtime never loses a fight against Lurkus. And he says, if Demauer can do it, I can do it too. Well, I think the Immortals can continue going. The barriers are just so freaking good. The barrier chains really was big. Now, for a split second, all the barriers are down, and it allows the Hydras and Lynx to shine. I don't know how much Rainer, how much longer Rainer can do this though. He has lost 6,700 resources more than Harstam. Harstam is expanding non-stop. Still has 74 workers. I'm afraid for Rainer that he's running out of steam. The man who once upon a time had 97 drones simply cannot do this anymore. Hydras are great, but they are expensive. I mean, he has lost probably 75 Hydras in this game. 57. I swapped the numbers around. But still. I mean, we still have 17 Hydras on the map, so we have made 74 Hydras throughout this game. And no matter how rich you are, no matter how many drones you have, that starts adding up. The mythical fighter, Harstam vs. Rainer, has shown up once more. The captain is an animal. These two are great friends, but Rainer is probably fuming. 
fuming over more ways than one. A Protoss and B. Why the hell does Horstum always turn into a god against him? A little bit of long distance mining as Reyna his units are walking through a meat grinder. Reyna did not pay attention there. That's very uncharacteristic because Reyna normally always pays attention. And to me that kind of indicates that perhaps he is mentally done with this game and he feels that he is dead. I think those little moments only ever happen. As Reyna starts shaking his head, leaning back in his chair. And he feels that it's done. Austin is number three protos in Europe. If he plays like this, absolutely. But the captain doesn't always play like this. Austin is excellent, but so is Skillers, so is Max Pack, so is Showtime. And there's a whole laundry list of great Protoss players in Europe. You think of Mana, Gerald, Christianer, who looked fantastic today. There's so many good Protosses in Europe. EU. I'm sure I'm forgetting one or two very obvious ones. As the storm is going to land on a couple of these links, we have cannons and batteries for days. Horstum is confident that this is the army that he needs to run into the natural of Raynor, who is morphing a couple of overseers to make sure that you can see this army. But what you can see, you cannot necessarily kill. How's this fight going in the bottom side of the map? Not good enough. I think this game is coming to an end. Raynor knows that. I think you guys know that. The captain. A beast. Shopify. Rebellions. Horstum. With that's the perfect uh, late game Protoss play. The right units at the right time, great movement. Right when I give him all the compliments, he forgets to move the Tempest for a split second, but does it really matter when you've done this many things right? We'll let him lose a couple of Tempests. GG gets called. Arstam takes the 1 0 lead after 19 minutes. In the quarterfinals, guys, it's 10 p.m. And the man takes the 1 0 lead. Gabe is hosting the semi finals, by the way. Would be fun to see the captain versus Max Pax. That would be fun. I think that Max Pax would also find that fun. Reyna would not find that fun. <laughs> Sick game. Awesome, just really good. Honestly, all I can really say. We'll settle that prediction and give you guys a brand new prediction. Reyna did take a serious beating from all those adapts. At one point, it felt that he was in a more than playable spot. But not enough. The proto struggles continue. For the man from Basilisk. I honestly feel that this is like the most I've ever seen Reyna struggle in any matchup since the kid turned 16 and started blossoming into a world class StarCraft 2 player. It's so bizarre to me to see him lose this many uh, series against Protoss in a row, this many games. And Reyna, even when people thought he was washed, still had an insane win record in pretty much every single thing he did. Now, lately, Protoss really is a serious problem for him. <laughs> now, the series is not over yet, and I still believe that the Italian Stallion can turn things around. As long as he can uh, stay calm, cool, and collected. Yes. Rainer is a passionate video gamer, and since he's fuming a little over Protoss at the moment, these kind of games can absolutely tilt him a bit. I hope that's not going to happen. But... I'm not watching his stream. I don't know if he's giving commentary. Take a look at it. He is streaming. No cam. If you guys want to watch the first person view of Rainer, you guys can do that over at RB underscore Rainer. I warn you, he is very quick. <laughs> so if you're looking for a very smooth stream, it's probably not the ideal place. If you want to be impressed and you want to show your friends or your mom, or your dad, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, how quick these guys play, then I think it's a great place to take a little look at. I believe that the game is over for you guys. I'll post that lobby link. Mm. Ashbringer is okay ish. He's like 5.7, 5.8k MMR. He's good, but a lot of people are very good in this game. 67% of you guys thought Reyna was going to get the 2-0, but it's Horstum with 33%. The Dutch season 33. Inevitable. Reyna. Uh, that means new prediction. Reyna versus Horstum. Best of 3-0-1 oh, at the moment. Who wins? Reyna to win 2-1. Horstum to win. 
two zero or two one. Ah, dirty. Wait, what? Hello. There we go. German keyboard. All right, five minutes. Clem one oh gape. Yeah, Clem arcade is good. Side Delta, second battleground. Let's do it. Round two, fight. Bottom right side of a side a Delta. We are looking at the main base of the man who is having nightmares of aliens these days. They're getting the best of him, and he's getting sick and tired of it. Basilisk Rainer. Top left side, we are looking at the main base of the captain, who's really starting to turn into a mythical creature whenever he goes up against Rainer these days. Shop of our rebellions, Harston. Oracles, well, adapts into Oracles, into resonating glaive adept and a bunch of chaos. Gave him a good setup, but to say that the game was over at that point would be absolutely silly. Harston still had to do so many things right to win that game. And lesser Protoss would not have been able to capitalize on the position that he was in. Harstum is a beast. He beat Showtime yesterday, easy peasy. What did he beat Showtime in yesterday? Was that the Africa World thing? I thought it was on Saturday. Are you guys making up tournaments now? This is the last quarterfinals, guys. That obviously means that this is a money match as well. Whoever wins this gets at least 50 bucks. If you make it into the grand finals, you get 100 bucks. If you win the tournament, you get 200. Give Harstam also a shout out. Did I not do that? How many compliments do I need to give Harstam in 12 minutes before it becomes too much? You know what it is, mate? If I give him like two more compliments, people can be like, <laughs> Ruddy is so biased. I can't win. Either we're biased, or we suck up, or whatever. I don't know if, if you mean his stream. I didn't know that he was streaming. If Harstam is streaming, then you guys can obviously take a look at his Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Harstam. I know he was live earlier today, but I did not know he was streaming the weekly. <laughs> I am also not forced to give anybody shoutouts, man. But I'll do it, because I like to do that. But that is not mandatory. <laughs> Don't think anybody has ever given me a shoutout. First two adepts got in range of the drones, but other than two zerglings, they are not able to find what they were looking for. But hey, the good news for the captain is that they are still alive, and we'll take it from there. Rainer has a bunch of zerglings with speed. Would love to show up right before that Nexus gets warped in. Actually, if he goes for that Nexus, I think it. Yeah. I think there was a tiny chance he would have been able to get a cancel. Because that Oracle was already flying towards the center. But Harsten was pretty quick with turning it around. He is very, very patient with activating Pulsar Beam. But it all works out for the captain. All of your points on Harsten. This is the map where a lot of Protoss players seem to be very fond of Heroes build. With the Twilight Council in the Forge. And then they warp in 8 gates, Zellal Charge plus 1. Don't know if Harstam is very fond of that build, but... I'm also curious to see where Rainer is going to go up to four bases. I see him take this base every now and then, and it feels kind of strange to me. It shouldn't, because if a Zerg is on the top side of the map and they take this one, it feels normal. But for some reason, at the bottom side of the map, I feel like they almost always take this one. That may have something to do with the fact that playing video games is fun. This is something that sometimes StarCraft 2 fans and viewers seem to forget. But a long time ago, we did not play video games only with the idea of is it worth our time? Can we make money? Can we become rich? No. We played video games because they are fun. And you know what's also fun? Competing. 
It's like asking, why do you play Padel Roddy when you're never gonna be Augustin Tapia? Well, because I think it's fun. <laughs> Am I ever gonna win something? No. Well, uh, maybe a, a grudge match against my brother. That's my dream. <laughs> 8.5,000 viewers, SC2 all streams, not bad for a Monday. That's not bad at all. I saw that Ben also made some tweets about Age of Empires 4 doing great. It feels that we had one or two or three weeks of negativity around RTS and people are starting to become a little bit more excited again. About everything, whatever they may be excited about, and that makes me happy. Harstim has got Blink, uh, does not have a pylon and a gateway on the other side of the map, but Harstim only has one real goal here, and that is going to cancel on this fourth base, and it's starting to look like he is going to very casually get that. Now we can recall, clump up these stalkers to the best of your ability, and just recall them home. Or, uh, Blink home, if Reyna does not want to take that fight. It's pretty big, guys. Canceling the fourth base is massive in this matchup. Why is he the captain? I think he has just kind of named himself the captain. It's a theme of his stream. He used to have little sailor boats going around. They, uh, I think the boys, Rainer and Elazer, Lambo, Harsem, they went on a holiday once in Spain. I don't know where exactly. And then they found a hat that spelled the captain, a sailor hat. It was spelled wrong and it became a meme and Harsem had it. He was always wearing it. I think that's where the whole captain thing came from. I could be wrong, but... I believe that is the origin of the captain. Storm is on the way for Harstam, who's obviously happy with the fact that he was able to cancel the fourth base of Raynor. Oracle is going to take some damage here, but it will live. Especially because that uh, queen is sleeping on the job. 78 drones for Rainer. Infestation pit is not uh, Omega early or anything. I'm sure that Rainer can eventually go Hive. But it's gonna take a little while. What are you giving his we play to win the game speech? <laughs> Who the hell is Augustin Tapia? He's the guy that I bought my record from me. He actually released a new record already. It's a beautiful white record. But it's 300 bucks and I have the feeling it's the same as the one that I currently have. That I got for like 140, so I can't justify an upgrade. Well, and that's to say he's very good. You should Google him. Take a look at some of his highlight highlights. And just type in Augustin Tapia highlights. Guy's insane. I like him. Mm -hmm. Competing is fun, guys. Can be stressful, but it doesn't hurt to test yourself. Mm -hmm. Rainer scouting the main and also dropping a Contaminate on the Forge to slow down these upgrades a little. Always feels good when you see that they were Chrono boosting a building and then you drop Contaminate. AoE 4 is bad and SC2 has Protoss. Well mate, maybe that's European. I've never played AoE 4 but I see a lot of nerds have fun with it. Let them have fun with it. It's okay for people to enjoy different things. It is not a crime. Do I think SE2 is the best? Of course. Does that matter? Not really. It's okay for other people to enjoy different things, mate. Especially when it's RTS related. It makes me kind of happy. We have enough MOBAs, enough shooter games, enough uh, battle royales. It will be nice to at least watch some RTS. How should Protoss respond to a one base swarm hose rush? Probably just expand and make sure that the locusts don't kill everything. <laughs> I mean, I, I need to see the scenario exactly what you're talking about, but I think as long as you're building oracles, you shouldn't really be in any trouble there. You can build some phoenixes too, void rays are good. But one base swarm most should not be that intimidating. Just make sure that the first wave of locusts don't do too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is going to take the bait? I missed some of these uh, comments. Since when do I ever take the bait? 109 versus 9 army supply. As Reyna says, fuck you Roddy and your lurkers. I'm going to the ultras, baby. Now, classic Reyna, guys, would be 
for this to go on for another 12 minutes and then he takes an absolute god tier fight with a bunch of infestors, neuroparasite and ultra shine bright like a diamond. I don't know if Harston really has a lot of ambition of letting the game go on for that long. The captain has played a lot of great series against Raynor in the past with a couple of fantastic storms here. He could potentially get a 2-0 victory. Harston very famously, at least in my eyes, a while ago said on my stream, if you generally think that Protoss is bad against Zerg, you have brain damage. Harstim is a firm believer in Protoss being good against Zerg, even if he loses against some Zergs every now and then. He's putting on a bit of a clinic today. Now he's not here yet, Raynor is going to do his absolute best to just you know, slog this one out. He has five Ultras on the way, that could be fantastic. But for those Ultras to shine, we kind of need Kindness Plating. And the Ultras initially won't have that. I just googled it and I expected SC2. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about something else, mate. <laughs> he is not a stock of two player, no. There is a football player called Tapi. I used to play for Feyenoord, but he wasn't very good. Rainer is running into a couple of stasis traps as he's trying to surround. More stasis traps have gone off here on the right side. The Ultras have kindness plating now, and they are doing their best, but Harstam's army is still standing pretty on that high ground. And that War Prism is sitting safe. Good job with the Queen there, saving it with the French Fuse. Rainer is trying to spend every single penny that he has. And if all of these links show up from the top side, maybe we can finally get a great fight. This should be a good fight, guys. The links, the Ultras. I think this is what exactly Rainer was hoping for. Uh, recall, but Ultras don't give a damn about Recall. Three out of those five I Templars die. One more Immortal. What a hold by Rainer. Insanely good hold by Reyna there, guys. It really felt that Harstam had him right where he wanted. And Reyna was in trouble. But the Italian Stallion lives to fight another day. And he says, all right, enough with you attacking me. Now it's my time. I've got some high-tech units. Got plus three melee. Got Adreno Glance. Finds another Immortal. Cannons are great, but if it's a mix of Lynx, Roaches, and Ultras, cannons actually struggle. And we really need some more than just a couple cannons. Arstam knows that, and that's why he's going to send over the War Prism. And honestly, he's kind of the main army. With battery overcharge there, Arstam is going to be able to at least save this base. That has completely lost this base in the bottom left side. I wouldn't hate a Dark Shrine in moments like this. I feel like that'd be very useful. Raynor is right now chasing an entire army with a lot of Immortals. Storms are softening up these Ultras. When will these Ultras finally die? That's probably what Arstam is asking himself. The answer is when four Immortals finally start shooting at them. One Immortal uh, actually falls, and the second one goes down. Only two of them remain. One low HP Ultra is doing its thing. More Ultras ravaging that base at 9 o'clock. And Raynor with a fantastic 10 out of 10 hold in the bottom side of the map. Great surround, great macro. I mean, if he would have missed a couple of injects there, he would have been in so much trouble. But it's the link flank with the Ultras and Kindness Plating to get the job done. Maybe Ultras are better than Lurkers after all. I don't know if Lurkers would have won that game. With that spot, that position that Raynor was in. Like Lurkers are very good at defending and holding a location. But then the Protoss just moves around and attacks elsewhere. It's Lurkers become a whole lot weaker if you ever have to unburrow them. And you have to run into a Protoss army with Storm, Archons and Immortals. Great fight by Raynor. Great defense. And that means we go to the rubber match. Jalea with the 31 months. Thank you, mate. Clem just won again. Big Gabe. Again, against. Or against. What was the score, mate? Was it a 2-0 for Claymore? Or was it a 2-1? So Clem is already in the grand finals. But we are still watching the quarter finals between Raider and Harston. We're all tied up. Winner of this best of three will move on into the semis. To took it out with Max Pax. Who did seem to have a bit of a tough run today for his own standards. Dropped the map against Strange, also a very good European Protoss. And also dropped the map against Wayne. But he's still here. The first ever weekly where we had a new seeding system. Changes things a little bit. We'll make sure that the same people do not run into each other every single week in the exact same round. 
But Reiner versus Max Pax potentially in the semi-finals. And the winner plays against Clem in the grand finals. After Clem defeated Gabe. It sounds pretty familiar. And we started 15 minutes later because of this. <laughs> Final round. Fight! Bottom right side of Oceanborn. We are looking at the main base of the man who got the job done with plus three melee, Zorglings, Adreno Glands, Great Flanks, and Fantastic Ultras, Basilisk, Rainer. Really good series, absolutely. I completely agree. This entire weekly has just been good, man. It started off in an absolute banger of a best of three between Bully and Shameless. I know you guys think this is good, but if you go back and you watch that, oh, I'm joking, but it was pretty fun. But no, it's just been a great Monday. The Monday nights, more often than not, deliver. And this one, I don't care what happens from here on out, has already delivered. We had a great evening of video games. The rest is a bonus. Top left side, Shopify, Rebellions, Harston. Playing a 6 series and obviously having a great run so far. Now I have to check, by the way, if he's live. Because did I leave him out, guys? Yeah, Harston is live. So there is more first person view. I'll let you guys know in the chat POV of Harstam this is the POV of Harstam and then obviously Rainer is over here with some uh, feisty keyboard signs POV so, double link in the chat double promo here I am guys selling out for my friends give them follows enjoy some first person action as well whatever you do please do not spoil the result of their game obviously as soon as it's over because they are allowed to stream without delay. Me as a commentator is forced to have a two minute delay. Mm. They they were Teddy Triple. It's just that uh, we played on a different patch back then. And obviously Max Pax has grown tremendously as a player. And there was a time where Gabe just had his number and was better in the matchup than Max Pax. Over time that has changed. And Hero Marine and Clam, it's always been pretty competitive between them. But Gabe was just kind of an animal, especially on the Monday night. And yeah, there were a few medals and a few patches where TVT was something that Gabe really uh, excelled at. And it was a matchup that gave Clem some troubles. Wouldn't say that Clem sucked in TVT, but in the old medals and the old patches that pr two, three maples ago, it was just a bit more doable for Gabe than it is in these days. TVT became a lot more mechanically demanding and a lot less on reliant on build orders and one move out one great siege up it just became a lot faster and obviously since clam is an incredibly quick player that favors clam mm. mm. why is there a zealot on the way guys is there, is i am so confused i have legitimately very, very rarely seen this. Is that just a zealot to be part of an early wall-off and he's going to fix the relic? Pack? No, now he can't. So odd. I don't, like, Harsim is a player that has a lot of mind games. And if I have to speculate, I'm going to say that he maybe tried to sell this as it is not Stargate. It might be Twilight Council. I have non-stop attack production. And by firing up a zealot, Maybe he's trying to scare Rainer. I don't really know what the purpose is of this exactly. But we had a Zealot on the way. We cancelled it. Then we made a Stalker. We cancelled that. We go back to the Zealot. In the end, the Oracle only kills uh, a single drone. So that's not great. The Zealot is out now. And we're going to put that on hold position in our wall off. I'm just not used to Austin building that Zealot. Maybe that's something new that he has... I don't know, been implementing. It's obviously not that big of a deal. But I know that Harstam does almost everything for a reason. So then, it does make me curious. Curiosity kills the cat. Maybe we'll ask him about it one of these days. With all the games we play tonight, yes. The Monday Night Weekly always gets finished up on Monday night. And since our Daylight Savings hasn't kicked in yet, by the time that this tournament is over, the American Weekly is starting. I believe that starts at midnight now, instead of 1am for us. And it's 10.15 here and we're in the quarterfinals, so... You know, if Clem wants to go for the double or Max Pax wants to defend his title on the American server... They don't even have to take a break anymore. 
There were days where they had to wait like two and a half, three hours to actually play in the American Weekly 2. It's not gonna happen tonight. By the time that our games are done, the American Weekly will be starting. Harstam is gonna open up with a Zello Charge plus one after the double Oracle and a few adapts that he made. This is that hero opening that I mentioned. And this is where some wise is gonna tell me that it wasn't hero's opening because some no-name protos did it on the ladder nine years ago. Does not matter, guys. Unless you're actually beating the best Zergs in the world with it, it's not your build. Once you start beating the very best, it becomes you. You can claim it. Even if it's a shameless copy. <laughs> Even if you did it against somebody who did it against your offerings on the ladder. If you pull it off against the big boys, it's yours. Mm. Mm. Korea Cup was won by Gumio this morning. I was watching a little bit of... Uh, did he? So he beat Dark. I actually didn't see that part. I watched a little of Dark stats, I believe it was. I had Wadi stream open for a while. Mm. Rainer is on 66 drones and 8 queens, and he hasn't really shown us a whole lot yet. Right when I say that, Rainer says, what about a Spire, Roddy? Is that something you might be interested in? That is a reference to my favorite TV show, but I don't know if you guys get it. Oh, so Harstam is here, though, with all of my roaches. Uh, with all of his zealots, excuse me. And Rainer has 8 roaches on the way. Now it all comes down to how much time can these queens buy for the roaches to come out. And I want to say I think the queens have done a very good job. Perfect queen positioning. That is not what you do with your oracles. Harstam makes the biggest mistake of this entire series so far. And it says a lot about how well he has played. But he loses two oracles for absolutely nothing at the tail end of the fight. He will, however, get the hatchery. As the queens were just a little bit too late to drop a transfuse. I don't know. I I think there are some scenarios where you could say, like, Brother, isn't this still okay for Harstam? And I would probably agree. I don't think this is one of them. Because now Harston will never ever scout that Spire in time. That Spire is already almost done. And so he's going to worry about Roaches, Lynx, Ravages, maybe some Bailings, right? And he's going to make Zealots, Immortals. And he has to actually worry about Mudas. And if I was Raynor, I would never make this one of these games where you make 8 Mudas and then you go back into ground. I think Raynor should go all out on Mudas here. Like, there is no reason to stop. I know a lot of Zergs just like to make the harassment mutas and then they go back into something else. But I think with the setup and the army that Harstam currently has, the more mutas the merrier. There are no cannons. There are no phoenix. There's only a single oracle. That's the third oracle that Harstam just made after he lost the initial two. Okay, Raynor is going to reveal the fact that he has mutalis. Harstam looks at this and he probably thinks, oh fuck. Mutas? That's annoying. Yes, Kef, it is going to be very, very annoying. Obviously, a little mistake there by Reina, guys, to reveal it like that because of the revelation. Austin is now hoping that that was the only Mutalus that Reina had, but Reina already made eight of them in total. One Stalker is not going to save you. Second Stalker won't save you. Don't forget that these Stalkers don't have Blink. Yes, they have plus two. What they don't have is Blink. Now, the good news for uh, Harstam is that Reina has done that I'm going to make a couple of Mudas and go back into ground. And if I was Harstam, I'd be very happy because I just don't see how you ever survive against 16, 20, 24 Mudalists. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 28 Roaches, couple Ravages on the way. How many Immortals are we looking at, guys? Three. Well, I've seen Harstam pull off bigger miracles than that, but not if he makes these kinds of errors. He loses one of the Immortals before the party even starts. Raynor is keeping Harstam busy with the Mutalisk. Because now Roaches come in from two different angles. A couple Force Wheels go down, but the Ravage count is high. I think we can start getting ready for a Raynor versus Max Pack semi-finals. As even though it looked like the Protoss matchup was going to get the best of Raynor once more. I think he's done enough here. Losing those Oracles was so sad for Harstam. If he didn't lose those oracles, guys, it would have all been probably very different. He knows about the Spire early. He can get ready for it. He can play a different game. And I just kind of blindsided him. I mean, that one Immortal is putting in some serious work. I don't know if 27 Army Supply is ever going to cut it. But a few more Zealots have been warped in. Roaches have now ran deep into the natural. Rainer should not go for that Immortal. Should have gone for more props. 
Instead, he's going to go for the Immortal Zealots and Night Templars here. Great series by the men from the Rebellion. Unfortunately, not quite enough. It is the Italian Stallion. The man who has hopes and dreams of winning a GSL Code S title this year. Some people think he's going to get buffed in Korea. Some people think he's going to dominate. I believe he will dominate. As long as we don't start tilting over Protoss 24-7. This one is over. Great series. Fun day. And it's time for the semi-finals. Not Oracle will fall. This time around to Ravages. Awesome is battling for every single penny. Great spot here to morph a roach into a Ravager. Yeah. You guys know it. Where is Le Tote when you need him the most? The display does not lay. It's a 100 in a win against 22. Rainer. Grazie ragazzi. Madonna advances into the semis. I'm going to go ahead and take a break because that was a long and pretty intense best of three. And I've said way too many words already in this five hour broadcast. So I'm going to take a couple minutes. And by the time that I come back, it is time for Rainer versus Max Pax. I'll see you guys real soon. High five.